Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. I hope you guys like unboxing episodes because this week you're probably going to be getting like two or three of them because I bought a bunch of stuff. But let's go ahead and start with our teaser topic right here. I bought a guitar from Norm's Rare Guitars, Norman Harris. He's like, hey buddy, you want this guitar? And it's like, sure. <laughs> That's not how it actually happened. So about six months ago, I realized that this signature model existed. I think it came out in like 2015. That was before I paid attention to new guitars. And it's one of my favorite F-hold instruments from Gibson. If I remember correctly, I think it was my first true vintage guitar that I ever owned. So I was on Reverb one night and I saw this thing get listed and it's like, whoa, that's a nice price. Remember when we did that guitar hunting episode where we were trying to find a deal at Norm's Rare Guitars? This is one of those times I found a deal. I think it was a deal anyways. I kind of took a risk because there wasn't a whole bunch of photos. But I'm really hoping this is the signature one like I thought it was. If not, oops, I made a mistake. But just in case you don't know who Norm's Rare Guitars is, I mean, you probably should if you watch my channel because they also have a YouTube channel that does a similar show, but at the same time, I feel we're different enough. We're never competing for viewers. I think we just have viewers that kind of uh, cross over in between everything, but they get more celebrity guests and stuff than I do. But I'd say they definitely pack their stuff well, so good job, Mr. Packing Guy at Norm's Rare Guitars. I think this is the first time I've ever had a lift-in case like this. That looks goofy in comparison to like the Les Paul styles. I'll try to get it level with you guys. You see how it's got that hump right there? Oh, and it's got the little dinky latches. That looks so strange coming from a guy who's never had such a high-end F-hold hollow-bodied instrument type thing. What did I find from Norm's Rare Guitars? I got a t-shirt, sweet. More on that later, but I got an ES-295 signed by Scotty Moore, which unfortunately he's not with us anymore. But now's the moment of truth. Is this, is this the actual signature one? Because that's what I thought it was, because in 2015, I think, Gibson did a limited run and he signed them right there. Ooh, it's got a chip on the top. Darn, I did not see that in the photos. Probably just wasn't looking enough. <laughs> they told me there was a COA. I think I'm going to have to ask him about that. Because there should be more than just a pre-packed checklist. But yes, this is one of the limited edition ones. 25 out of 81. Maybe they have that somewhere. Hopefully they do. I love ES-295s and I haven't had one of these for like five years. I've talked about them on the show quite often. But this is that signature version, and you're going to notice it's got this really strange fingertip bridge. I forget what they call it on these guys. And they've got the uh, trapeze-style tailpiece, and it's really nice seeing that block here that's actually gold and colored. But it does appear to uh, have arrived safely. I guess I'll just have to ask them where that COA went to. <laughs> because that's kind of a big deal when it comes to this guitar, but I love this fretboard. You guys can't appreciate it here on the GoPro camera, or maybe you can, that's like super dark. I always say the true mark of a seller is how they deal with issues on orders. Because, you know, if somebody sends you a perfect guitar, yeah, yippee, woohoo, I got a perfect guitar, great. But what happens if you get a guitar that does have some issues? Are they still friendly and responsive, or do you get a big brick wall that says deal with it? And thankfully, it was a quick message, and within 20 minutes, they're like, oh, we're so sorry. Our packing guy must have forgot to put that in there. So they're going to send me the COA and all that, so we're good. But unfortunately, that, that ding wasn't in the photos, and they think it might have happened when it was getting packed up as well, and it just went unnoticed. I can totally see how that happened. I mean, watch me when I'm unboxing it. That lid just wants to keep falling. It sounds like they'll make everything right with me, and it is a fantastic guitar. Moving on here, today's sponsor is actually uh, my Sweetwater sales engineer. He wanted me to let you guys know that he is taking on new customers, so you can call him directly at Sweetwater's phone number at extension 1787. And he will be happy to help guide you on whatever stuff you're looking at, as well as write you up some sales slips and orders and whatnot, just like I did with him for this particular guitar. So this one, I just 
thought it kind of had a nice top. It's a Les Paul reissue, kind of like we did, I think about two unboxing episodes ago. And it was slightly part of the new Guitar Day program in a roundabout way that he just wanted to see his guitar get unboxed on the show before he got it. So we just worked all together with that. And here's what we got going on here. A little bit of case candy, legitimately and some other marketing materials. But this was a very last of its kind. After I had ordered this, the page went dead. It said this item is no longer available. It's like, oh, <laughs> I didn't even know that was gonna be the last one. But what is this the last of its kind of? Man, you know, I think my unboxing series, you know, has finally paid off because I'm seeing dealers, you know, give better protection and better padding, including Gibson themselves. Do you guys remember like uh, a year ago, I'd buy a brand new Gibson, they'd be flopping around in here. And now they've got all this padding and stuff. Now I'm sure that has something to do with uh, new management and ownership saying, hey, why don't we actually spend a little bit more to make sure the guitars arrive okay, instead of rebuilding them all the time but even just regular sellers. So who knows, maybe I have slightly rubbed off on people. I don't want to take all the credit. But inside here sleeps the very last. Oh, wow. That is really nice. This is the very last, uh, 1960 60th anniversary RO that Sweetwater is getting in this particular color. Oh, <laughs> oh man, I am really happy with this top. I thought it looked okay in Sweetwater's photos, like it would have a decent little top and whatnot, but I was really hopeful that in person it would have that very vintage look to it. And it does. This reminds me of a certain burst that I have seen. And it's got that really dark, rich red color at the end. But then really not necessarily pinstripey, but kind of like a quilty flame type action going on. That's a nice top. But this is the last one in this particular finish that Sweetwater's getting. So I can't call Nate up and say, hey, I want a 60th anniversary just like Trogley just got. Uh, these are out of stock, but you know, next year I'm sure you can get something like that's a similar color. It just won't have the fancy 60th medallion. Cool. Yeah, this thing looks great. See, this reminds me more so of my first one that I did the review on. Thanks, Nate, for hooking me up with that. And again, you can uh, reach him at this extension at Sweetwater if you don't have your own sales engineer already. Oh boy, and now we have to somehow get to this box. <laughs> I'm running out of room. Ugh, this is uh, from, I think, a, a fan of the show. Like I just happened to make an offer on their listing on Reverb. Sometimes I think that bites me in the butt and sometimes I think that helps me <laughs> because occasionally it's a fan of the show and they're like, okay, yeah, I like what you do, man. So I'll sell it to you a little bit cheaper than I wanted. Other times I'm sure people are like, that troggly guy always sending low ball offers. But I guess that depends on who you're asking. If my offer is like under like 35 to 40% of what they want, I usually don't waste their time. But a lot of times people are just, they, they want an offer, some sort of an offer, and they're unsure of what it could sell for. Like, you know, I don't want to talk about silver bursts too much, but you know, people are asking the moon for those and just, you know, hoping that they land within the stars as far as their price. I think I was uh, talking about this guitar on an unboxing episode. I'd say that was uh, maybe five days ago or so. But inside here, we got an Epiphone case. But, oh man, that looks great. The full size 335, I think they call them the ES335 Studios. Kind of Tom DeLonge-esque with the fact that it's got the Dirty Fingers pickup. It's just one pickup, bridge and tailpiece system. You get master volume, master tone, tenon cover, all that good stuff. Initially, I was saying for the full review and demo of this guitar, I wanted to find a black one that had the trapeze tailpiece, and I think I might. So, I mean, if you really want this guitar, I might sell it before the review and just wait for that other one. Or if you want to trade me your really clean black one. Um, it, it's kind of hard to say. I think these are technically more desirable, so you might have to add some cash on your part. This is actually really clean shape. I'm impressed. 
I like this much better than the 339 version already, just based on the feel. I mean, all the blue just comes and attacks ya. It's great. I like it. Looks like we got some slight internal cracking on the knobs, but that's okay. I'm, I'm surprised just how much I like this. I hate to talk down on 339s because I enjoy the concept of them, but I'm just a guy that prefers, if I'm gonna go the 335 style, I want it to be big. But hey, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed unboxing some guitars with me today. You know, historic reissue and a couple of ES style guitars. Can't ask for more than that. Let's go ahead and uh, pack some stuff up. Which just happens to be this guy. I guess I don't really have to tell you guys the story on this one because we already did. The beautiful 60th RO. Next up, the Gibson Corvus. You know, one day I just decided, hey, let's do the Corvus review. This was actually the very last guitar that I bought in 2019. I think I got it in like February or something and it just sat in my, eventually I should do this pile. And it's mainly because it was a really dirty guitar and I had to do quite a bit of cleaning to it. And when uh, Michael Weber had came over to demo some stuff, he was kind of getting bored of Les Pauls after like the first couple of them. So it's like, okay, let's hand him this freaky thing. <laughs> he didn't really like it that much, but I really attribute that to the really rusty strings. I mean, once I got this cleaned up afterwards, it's it's a nice playing guitar, but it's not the best guitar in the world. And I was very honest with that in my descriptions and all that, but despite all that, even I still want to own a Corvus. <laughs> They're just too goofy not to love. Let's go ahead and get this packed up. It's actually going to the same guy who bought my Studio Custom a couple of weeks ago. Next to pack up here is the Troublemaker Telly. So I actually need to finish up a story. In that review and demo, I magically had two of them out of nowhere. And that's because I've been having issues with this GoPro. Like it'll continue recording, but it doesn't tell me that it stops filming the video or it's not actually recording the audio and it'll cut in and out. So unfortunately the second unboxing and like most of my initial impressions of this thing had to be trashed. And it's not fun for me at all to have to refilm first impressions and fake it. So I just kind of chopped that video up the best I could to make it look good. But the kind of hilarious story with these things are I found out you can actually get brand new guitars from Fender's website a little bit earlier than most dealers. So if you sign up for their mailing list, they'll say, hey, these are in stock. You better get them fast and you need to get them fast. They literally sell out within hours after that email. And this one just happened to come at 4 a.m. And I happened to have heard my phone when it went off. I was like half awake trying to order stuff and apparently I had ordered two of them. <laughs> it was kind of funny when I woke up and realized my mistake but I was like, yeah, that's okay. These things will sell and they did. So I think it was nice that I was able to both fulfill the new guitar day order as well as somebody else on Reverb to help them get one before most other dealers. Kind of a cool guitar, a little bit complicated to understand, but it's not as bad as I made it seem in the review and demo. So it's just regular three-way toggle switch, except for you can coil split each of these pickups, but this one will then bring in the middle position, but it'll only bring it in for the middle and the bridge position, not the neck. And then you get all the different tapping capabilities. It was a real pain in the butt to demo this guitar. <laughs> But it was pretty nice, but you can check out the full review and demo if you want to learn more about this guy. Let's go ahead and get it packed up. Moving on, we've got this Ibanez. And I had a lot of people saying that they really wanted me to review this gem. However, even though I do like this design, I don't like it enough to do a review. I just know that this thing would have sat for a year and a half before I would have ever got around to it. I do want to review a gem. It's just, I would rather get a more collectible one if I'm going to talk about the history of the gem and all that, because there's definitely some cool swirly paint jobs, but the blue floral pattern is actually quite nice. 
It's just, you know, I I'm too bogged down right now with other reviews that I know a little bit more about and I'm more excited to do. But we will be getting some Steve Vai action within a, a couple of months. Uh, that's been a long pre-order wait, so let's go ahead and get this one sent off to its new home. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in to this boxing unboxing episode. I hope you enjoyed getting to see all these guitars, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.